You can follow along with the message using the sermon notes found on our app. Here's how you can find them. First, make sure you download the ROLMT app. Aside from the sermon notes, there is so much more content available and ways to stay connected with your ROL family. When you first open up the app, tap the gather button on the bottom menu bar, then choose sermon notes. From there, click on the series we are currently in. The first option is always the most recent. Then click whichever part we're in, and there you can follow along during the sermon with key scripture and filling in keywords. You can also add your own notes at the bottom and save everything to your phone for later reference. Welcome to River of Life. We're so glad that you could join us. I'm Nikki. And I'm Jamie. And welcome to Church Chat, Chat, where we bring you the announcements. We have a volunteer opportunity here at the church. The Kid Check team with the River Kids Ministry and the church is extremely important. This allows the children to get securely checked in and out of the program. All of our volunteers are background checked and trained and asked to serve one gathering per month. And the best part is you don't miss out on the sermon. If you would like to sign up for this ministry, you can sign up using the serving form or you can talk to me directly. The clothing closet is in need of men's jeans and women's plus size clothing. These items can be dropped off during office hours at the church. Frontline Youth's Winter Retreat is coming up soon. This is a great opportunity for students to get away over a weekend and spend time with their friends and their youth leaders. This is going to be an awesome experience for the youth kids. This is an opportunity to get away after winter into spring. You can sign up at the Welcome Center or on the app, and if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to Pastor Hunter Tan. We would like to invite you all to an event called Laugh for Life, an opportunity to support CareNet at the University Theater. This is going to be a fun night of laughter as we watch stand-up comedian Jaron Myers. This event is February 17th at 7 p.m. Tickets are $25 per adult or $15 per student. If this is something you're interested in, to purchase your tickets, please scan the QR code below. Well, these have been our announcements. Now get ready for Pastor Seth and the worship team to come on stage and lead us in a time of worship. Pastor Jason will join us for the continuing of the Underdog series, and we get to watch our church family as they declare their love for Jesus. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nikki. And I'm Jamie. And thanks for watching Church Chat. Chat. Come to the river, come to the river, taste and see.
worship today. Scripture says that he inhabits the praises that we lift up. So can we lift up praise today? Can we lift up a voice today? A shout of triumph today? think about everything that happens when God steps into the room that he inhabits this place when we lift our voice when we get ourselves able to stop looking at what's in front of us and start looking up to heaven that what happens when God moves is something incredible lives are healed a brokenness is restored chains are falling off freedom is breaking out when God steps into the room and all it takes is for you church to lift your voice so can we do that today we sing a song and you come in make it dance and you come in shout your name and you come in give your praise and you come in we sing a song and you come in make it dance and you come in shout your name and you come in give your praise and you come in we sing a song and you gigantic horse trough that's on stage, um, but we're going to dunk some people today, and so we're excited about that, and we're going to jump uh, straight into our tithe message, and Pastor Jason's is going to share the word, and then uh, we're going to watch some people de declare their lives for Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Well, hello, River. Wow, there's some energy in here tonight. I love it. Um, hey, uh, Brakeliners, you're staring with us tonight. Yeah, right? Um, if it is your first, second, or third time here with us, uh, if you wouldn't mind taking one of these cards that's in a seat back in front of you and filling it out, taking it to the new here table, we have a gift for you. We just like to say, you know, welcome and thanks for joining us. So um, we're going to be short and sweet because we got a lot going on tonight, but it's going to be awesome. So I just want to uh, right now invite you to partner with what God is doing through your tithes and your offerings here. That's right. Um, we have so much going on here throughout the week and whatever you are able to pour out, Lord, we just take it and we put it back out. And that is our goal with our tithes and offerings here. So um, we're going to have the ushers come forward. I'm going to pray over it. There's several ways that you can give. They're going to put them in the screen behind me here. And let's go over and um, go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we get to come before you with our tithes and offerings and say, do what you will with them, Lord. That we get, put them into your hands to double, to triple, and to go out into this community and show your love, your mercy, and your grace to people. We thank you for what is going to happen here tonight. We praise you for those that are going to come up and say, I declare that I am a follower of Jesus Christ. 
Lord, just um, anoint Pastor Jason's lips as he comes up to speak your word out. We say all this in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, good evening, River of Life. We are excited about tonight. We're excited about what God is doing. Uh, in just a few moments, as Pastor Seth mentioned, and so did uh, Pastor Angela, we are going to do baptisms. If you have uh, not signed up to be baptized, but you're interested in being baptized tonight, you can make your way to the back of the auditorium, and Tiana will be in the lobby back there. She'd be more than happy to sign you up. If you say, well, I didn't bring a change of clothes, we got you covered. If you say, I didn't bring a towel, we got you covered. If you say, I have people that I'd like to watch me get baptized, we have a live stream, we got you covered. So we've really removed all the excuses for you. And so uh, we would love to see that happen. I know we've got uh, five or six people already signed up to be baptized tonight, and we'll do that during our time of worship at the end. But I did want to take a few moments today, and I wanted to just spend a little time in God's Word if you've been with us over the last few weeks, you know that we've been in a series called Underdog, and uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 4 says this, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Let's pray. God, in the next few moments as we spend some time looking at your word, I pray, Father, that you will show us exactly what we need to see. God, I'm so grateful because you are so faithful. And Lord Jesus, as we spend time being reminded of the fact that we are not underdogs, that Lord Jesus, you have already won the victory for us. God, help us to walk in that. Help us to understand that. Lord, I pray for those who are uh, joining us from Star Valley and those who will watch in Malawi and on the North Slope and eventually those who will watch this in jail. I pray, God, wherever we find ourselves, that God, tonight would be a night that we would, we would hear from you, we would lean in and trust you. And we just praise you for that and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want to talk just for a few moments today. If you've been with us, you know we've been talking about this understanding and trying to walk in this understanding that God has called his church to be a people who are victorious. We are not the underdog. We are, those, we are the ones who have already won because he's already won. But as I was thinking about that this week, I was thinking about how the enemy doesn't actually have the power to snuff out your life. So what he does instead is he tries to steal your sense of victory. And many of you have come into this place today and you feel as though you're defeated. You feel as though life keeps handing you one bad thing after another. And I want you to understand that God is fighting for you. Think about, uh, think about this because if we really were to come to a place where we understood that God fights for us, can I tell you, God can't lose. God can't lose. So... If he can't lose, but then you can't lose. If you put your hope and your trust and your faith in him, then you can't lose. The problem is when we lose is when we give up. If you're a believer and you sit in the room today and you say, yeah, I just keep losing, it's because you keep giving up. Because God always has victory for you. But sometimes it, it's, it's further down the road than we would like it, but it's always there and it's always going to happen. I, I was uh, reminded of a movie that came out, I think it came out in the 90s, it was called The Bear. I don't know how many of you saw that movie, but it was, a, it was kind of a documentary slash, uh, slash it had a storyline to it, and it was about this mother bear, and she's raising her cubs, and in the middle of that story, I, I was reminded of this particular scene, and it is the little bear cub is out, and he's playing on his own, and the mom has kind of gotten a little ways away from, from the, the baby bear, and, and in this particular scene, a cougar comes and is sneaking up on the baby bear, 
and the baby bear is just doing his thing, and all of a sudden the cougar comes, and, and there's a whole scene where the baby bear gets in the, in the river and is being taken down the stream, and the cougar runs ahead and is waiting for him, and there's this whole scene that happens, and eventually they end up in the same place, and, they, and the cougar is standing there, and the, and the little cub is standing there, and the, and the cougar starts to swipe at the baby bear, and all of a sudden, in the middle of this scene, you see this little baby bear, and he, and he stands up on his hind legs, and he begins to growl. Yeah. Yeah. And in this scene, you, the, the growl sounds a lot better than you would think from a baby bear. <laughs> and the camera angle changes. It goes around the baby bear, and we see it. We see, that, we see from the backside of the cougar, we see what the cougar sees. And it's the mama bear standing behind the baby bear. <laughs> on her hind legs and she's growling. And now all of a sudden the cougar gets a little perspective. I couldn't help as I was thinking about that, about thinking about the fact that that's how our enemy is when we allow ourselves to understand that the God of the universe fights for us. There are so many times in our life that we run scared or we, we make decisions out of fear because we feel like in that particular scenario, we feel as though maybe we are the underdog. And so I want to take a few moments today and I want to talk to you about our identity in Christ. Because as we talk about our identity being in Christ, it should boost our confidence and it should help us to walk in boldness and in faith. Yeah. I think that oftentimes this gets out of whack if we if we don't really understand that, that we are following God and that he loves us and that he does fight for us. So knowing who God says that we are is very important because God sees you differently than you see yourself. Yeah, come on. We often see ourselves through the eyes of betrayal or hurt or rejection. And in turn, we constantly are striving for the approval of others. But we need to realize that the truth is that our identity is, is not how others see us, it's how God sees us. And the truth of my identity is, that is, is how God sees me. And, and can I tell you that God, when he looks at you, no matter how hard your life has been, no matter what the struggle has been inside of your, inside of your story, God always looks at you and sees potential. He sees strength in you. He sees winning in you. He sees overcoming in you. The more deeply we reinforce our identity in Christ, the more fortified we will be against the onslaught of the opposing voices that are in our lives. So I want to take a moment tonight and I want to, I want to remind you of what God sees when he sees you and what God's word says about you. And, and I don't have a ton of time tonight because we've got so many other things that are going on, but I want you to understand that the process that we need to walk through is to break off the lies and the strongholds, the addictions, the shame, and anything that is holding you back from unlocking the door to a new life in Christ. Right. Now, you may be here and you may feel like you may have said, yes, I'm, I'm going to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And if you've done that, then I would encourage you that if you've not been baptized in water, this is the next step. This is an important piece to the, your faith journey. But part of it also is having an understanding of what Christ sees when he sees you and what he says about you. He says that you are a new creation in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Now, I'm going to stop there for a moment because some of you need to hear that verse and maybe I need to put it on repeat because you've lived your life where you've accepted Christ, but yet the enemy keeps telling you that you are who you were. But that's not what my Bible says. My Bible says that the old is gone and the new has come. Scripture says that you are reconciled in Christ and that, that my message of re reconciliation, that I have this message of reconciliation and freedom. And we see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, and all these verses are available on the app if you follow along in the notes. It says this, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So we are to be healers, not conflict causers. We are to be in the business of reconciliation. 
If you are somebody who is constantly causing turmoil, if you're at work causing a, causing a mess, then you are not doing what God's called you to do because he's called you to be a, somebody who reconciles. The Bible says that I am righteous and holy in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. And to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Now, is that because I've earned it? No, it's because he earned it. It's not because I'm good enough. It's because he's good enough. I have been born again by the Holy Spirit. Jesus answered very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. Hallelujah. It says, I'm saved by grace as a gift, not because of my performance. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. So you can't take credit for it, but you know what else you can't do is you can't feel like every time you make a mistake, it means that you are a mistake. Some of you need that tonight. You need to hear that today. Because just because you make mistakes doesn't make you a mistake. Your identity is a gift, and it's not based on your performance. It's not based on you deserve it. It's based on the fact that Christ loved you enough that he paid the price for your stuff. I shine light wherever I go, according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And then in Philippians chapter 2, verse 15, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 says that I'm a child of the king. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, for God who said, let there be light out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Psalms 9711, light shines on the godly and joy on those whose heart are right. So can I just tell you that, that God speaks life over you. God speaks victory over you. So when the enemy comes in and he will come in and he will, he will try and convince you that you are less than or that you are unable or that that addiction will always have the better of you, that whatever you've struggled with, that, that you're never going to get to the other side of it and that sin will always win in your life. All of those are lies because they don't line up with the book. Amen. It doesn't line up with what the book says about you. Can I tell you that you have royalty in your veins? You are a cho chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Hear that, God's special possession. He cherishes you. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. you are designed for good works. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which, he, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are co-heirs with Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. I know there's a lot of scripture, but I want you to hear what the Bible says. I don't need you to hear what the bald guy says about you. You need to hear what, what God says about you. Because if I just say it, you can go out of here and go, I'll believe it because I like him. But if someday you don't like me, you won't believe it anymore. But it's what God says about you that matters. You are a co-heir with Christ. And then it says, I'm, a ch I'm chosen and called by God to produce fruit. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. So God paid a ransom to save you. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 talks about that. There's all kinds of scripture, and we could spend all night just looking at what God says about you, but I just wanted you to hear some of those, because when we know our identity, we can fight off the insecurity that causes conflicts. 
Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So my hope in this series is to change the way that you think. I think that in the society that we live in, if you turn on the news, if you watch social media, any of those things, it's super easy to feel like we're losing. It's super easy to feel like, like everything, everyone is against us. Everyone is against the Bible. Everyone is against what we believe. And I understand that. But can I tell you this, that, that God is in control. Yes, he, is. he is firmly in control. Yes. And if the church will stand and understand that we need to change the way that we think, we need to understand that God is fighting for you, yes. then all of a sudden we will stand up. When we feel like if I stand up, I'm going to be ostracized or I'm going to be put to the side or I'm going to be canceled or whatever, then we don't stand. We, we, we cower back out of some kind of fear. But I'm telling you right now that God has not called you to be an under, underdog. He's, he wants to transform your life. He wants to transform you from underdog to victor. And that happens when we surrender. Yeah. Now, if you've been with us over the last few weeks, you know that we've been watching videos of people from within our church family and seeing what God is doing inside of their lives or has done inside of their lives. And I think this has been such a powerful and important season in our church because there are so many of you that have walked through some very difficult things and there are others in the room that need to hear that and see that. Why? Because we, it's, it's affirming to us. God affirms us when we hear somebody else's story. When all of a sudden you sit in the, in the chair and you go, man, I, I guess I'm not the only one that's walking through something hard. Or, oh man, I had no idea that that person has gone through that struggle that I walked through. And, and I see them coming out on the other side of it. And so we still, we've got so many that we still want to play, but, but today I wanted to play one specifically that I think is important because I know that there are many of you that maybe you sit in the house today and, you, and you're struggling in this, in this exact same way that uh, Tara was struggling in. And so I, we're going to show this video that shows both Tara and David. Hi, my name is Tara Mudd, and I have been coming to River of Life for about eight years now. When my husband and I, David, first started dating, we were in very similar spots in life as far as religion and faith went. Um, I had been raised Lutheran. Um, it was very much about rules and what you can and can't do. Um, my husband had not been raised with any um, sort of faith at all. And um, I remember one of our very first conversations was about religion. And um, he expressed to me how he thought that religion was for the weak-minded, anybody who needed another being that you couldn't see um, was just weak. And I didn't agree or disagree with that, but it didn't alarm me after getting married and having children. You know, life just keeps trucking on. And um, Brindley became preschool age and a friend of mine was sending her kids to um, a Lutheran preschool. So um, they're inexpensive. And I was like, why not? It's not that I don't believe, I just don't go to church. Um, and from the very beginning, Brinley was very drawn to the Lord. She enjoyed being read to out of the Bible. She often asked us to read out of the Bible. That was just what was so great about Brinley is she was just very drawn, drawn to the Lord. Um, she started asking questions about God and things that I just couldn't answer. And, um, at the time, I, me and my girlfriend were participating in a mops group, which is a Christian-based moms group. And she asked me one day, hey, you wanna go to church with me? And I was like, sure, why not? So we began going to Gold Creek Church in the Seattle area and it was very different from anything I'd ever experienced growing up. Um, this is where I was introduced to a relationship with Jesus. And one Easter, we 
ended up at church as a family. David came along with us and he experienced a completely different kind of church and was intrigued um, and started coming with us pretty regularly. We served in the two-year-old room for um, kids' church and that's about as far as it went. Like it never got any deeper. We never really, really embraced the whole idea of following Jesus because our life in church was very different than what we lived at home. We didn't, we didn't talk about God. We didn't pray. We didn't do those things. So um, it was never a real big part of our family. Opportunity arose for us to move to Montana and our big con top of the list was about moving here was um, giving up our church. And I was just scared. I knew that if we left where we felt comfortable, that um, it was probably the end. And unfortunately, we made the move, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, we made the move to Missoula. And as I feared, that was kind of the end of church. Brindley was invited to River of Life and um, for months, I was like, why do I want to go out to East Missoula to go to church? That's way too far. I don't know. No, 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 we're not going. Um, and then eventually I wore down and <laughs> we showed up at River of Life. And by we, I mean Brindley, Gavin, um, and I. David didn't want any part of it at that time. Um, his religion was football. That was definitely more important on Sundays than coming to church. We kind of just went on. That's just the way it was. Mom and the kids went to church and dad worked and stayed home and watched football. So I think, I don't remember like timeline as far as like years that this happened. Um, but I remember Pastor Jason preaching. It was at the beginning of the year. He did, was doing a series on family and he was specifically preaching to people, um, spouses that their, their significant other wasn't attending church. And he used a term called nag and drag. And, um, I was like, oh, that's me. I'm nagging and dragging. <laughs> and so um, at that point, I quit asking. My mom had um, and I had gone to women's retreat. And um, on our way home, she said to me, um, you're a completely different person when you're with your church family than you are at home. And I was like, eh, ha ha, whatever. And she's like, which one is the real you? And that hit hard, very hard. Part of me was following Jesus and wanting to do the right thing. And at home, I was scared to say anything about Jesus. David wasn't really interested in, in making any of decisions um, based on biblical principles. Um, and quite honestly, I was afraid to share my beliefs and what I thought because I didn't want to scare him away. But in that moment and that contemplating about who was the real me, I realized that if I was gonna ever turn my husband to Christ, it was by living a Christ-like life and that I needed to bring it home. I was at a point in my marriage that I, I would look around at church and I would see couples and I would want that so bad for myself. And I wondered, like, is this the point where I say, I can't do this anymore? I want that. And when it really came down to it, I love David way too much to give up. And God told me then, he's like, did you not learn anything from the last trial I gave you? <laughs> It was probably a few years before this that we had experienced some um, issues with our daughter. She had started to walk away from the Lord and make decisions that were not um, healthy. And in a moment of despair, I just cried out to the Lord and He told me, 
I got this. And my friend Angie told me to picture myself taking my daughter and laying her at the feet of Jesus because Jesus loves her more than you do. And in this moment of reflection on this experience, I was like, oh, all this I want, I want a husband that that follows Jesus. I want a marriage that is Christ filled. I, 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 I realized that I was in the same, same situation all over again. And I was trying to control the situation and it wasn't mine to control. David's relationship with Christ was between him and Christ, not me and him. That's when I I remembered a movie that I had watched. The wife in this movie prays for her husband. She prays Ezekiel 36, 26. And every night, faithfully, I would open up my Bible to that verse and I would pray for the Lord to soften David's heart um, and to remove his heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. And I would pray for him. I was becoming more and more unhappy, uh, angry, uh, probably drinking too much. Um, You know, you name it. If if there was something to be upset about, I found a way to be upset about it. Um, I would purposely schedule myself because yes, I wrote the schedule at work. uh, Sometimes on Saturdays to work late uh, just because I knew that I wouldn't have to come to church. You know, I was one of those, uh, what we call a CEO, you know, Christmas, Easter, and other. Uh, It was one of those others that I went to church with Tara, again, for the wrong reasons, just because I was trying to appease her, trying to make her happy. Um, So we came on a Mother's Day weekend, and I remember for the first time um, feeling like in that service, and I can't remember the exact um, message, but I just remember leaving feeling like, I had been spoken to finally, and I, I, I heard the word rather than just going through the motions. It actually had an impact on me, and I left feeling like, you know, I, I was hearing something that I needed to hear and learning something that I needed to learn. So the week passed, and I just remember that next Saturday, uh, I don't remember what I was doing, probably doing my normal Saturday stuff, and I, I just remember hearing a voice say, just go. And I kind of looked around the room like, who's in here with me? No, nobody was there. And so I was like, just go where? And within the hour, I knew in my heart that, you know, it was here, that I was supposed to be here. And so, uh, you know, went to church again that weekend. Um, Several weekends later, Jason was counting. Uh, You've been here eight weeks in a row, nine weeks in a row. I think he missed a couple here or there, but that's beside the point. At that time, I I started to become more and more involved, uh, doing different things, day of service, um, you know, just doing little things here and there where I could. Um, I was uh, brought in by Tara uh, to help Seth with sound, um, which also helped, um, pardon the pun, plug me in. Um, so we, we were able to become more involved in that as well, which I still am doing sound now. It was our anniversary, which is July 1st. We were out of town and I finally got up the nerve to be like, ah, I love the fact that you're coming to church with us, but I have to know what changed. He just said to me, he's like, I'm just so miserable in all areas of life, I knew that I needed something more. David got voluntold, as he likes to tell me, <laughs> that he needed to join the sound ministry. I asked him to come, and if I did it, if he would do it with me, because I knew he would be great. He's totally into music. He loves all of that. He'll say, oh, I love this guitar. Like, do you hear that? I'm like, sure, but that's that's his thing. <laughs> um, And so getting involved definitely, definitely helped growing his relationship because now he had responsibilities and he was connecting to the church family in a different way. We went to a weekend to remember also last year. um, And that also kind of 
changed my mind. That was the second time I heard that little voice say, you need to bring this back. Um, it was the first time I'd heard the phrase, uh, a God-centered marriage. And as I was spending that weekend uh, with my wife and and just with all of the the other people in the group that we were there with, I, I just felt like I needed to bring something back. Um, and so when I did that, I came back and Tara and I actually lead a small group on marriage now um, based around family life and, uh, and the, a weekend to remember. I feel like I'd be lost right now without, without you know, being here, being connected, um, you know, taking this walk and, um, you know, just living a, a much, much better life. So for whatever reason you came this weekend or whatever weekend it is, um, just know that if you come in with an open mind and you are ready to listen and, you know, if you hear that voice or ha make that connection or have that encouragement, jump in both feet. Just jump in, just go for it. Because when you jump in, you will not regret it. I think I'm a perfect example of, of doing that. Um, you know, becoming part of the sound ministry, being baptized, you know, shortly after that. Uh, now I'm on the board. If I could say anything, don't give up, but don't control. Give it to God, because really He's the only one that can change a heart and David is proof of that. The other thing that I would say is keep your roots grounded. Don't let those influences influence your faith. Keep it steady, keep coming, keep praying, and let God work. That's so good. Um. I know some of you needed to hear that. I know that there are many of you that um, have already experienced God stepping in, in your story, in that way, but I also know there are some of you that come and, and sit in the room and, and that's, that's your dream, is that your child or your spouse or someone else in your family will, will one day join you. And, and I think that was perfect advice to just keep praying and believing and trusting because God does love your child or your spouse more than you do. And he so badly wants relationship with them. Amen? Amen. That was so good, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I want to just take just a few more moments, and then we're going to jump into baptisms. But I, 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 wanted to, I wanted you to hear that because I want you to understand that God affirms us so that we can affirm others. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 says, God affirms us, making us, sure thing in, making us a sure thing in Christ, putting his yes within us, by his spirit, he has stamped us with his eternal pledge, a sure beginning of what he is destined to complete. And I love that verse because it says that he stamps his yes inside of us. And I was reminded this week as our staff, we went to a conference and one of the sessions that I sat in was just that understanding of that God stamps a yes in you. He stamps a yes inside of you because he is saying, Yes, like, can you, he's such a good dad that he is like, you know what I mean? If you want to lean into what I have for you, I'm going to just keep saying yes. Now, maybe you heard of that thing where parents just have a yes day. I never did this, but <laughs> where you just let your kids, whatever they say within reason, you say yes to it. Um, that would have scared me with my two sons, but, but God is that way when we say, hey, God, I am chasing you. I'm pursuing you. God is he always wants to say yes to you. It brings him pleasure to say yes to you. But for many of us, we, we already pre-say the no, assuming, well, this is the reasons why all of this won't work. This is why it can't happen. This is why I'll always be behind. This is why I'll always struggle. And so I think for some of us, as we look at this, we need to understand there's a, there's a difference between confidence and arrogance. And confidence comes when we are secure. Arrogance actually comes when we're insecure. And so for some of you, you need to understand that, that God wants you to walk com confidently. I, I keep going back to that imagery of that little bear that stands up on his hind legs and begins to roar. All the while, mama bear is right behind him, and she's got all the authority that she needs to keep him safe. But it took his confidence to make him stand up 
and, and be who he's supposed to be. And for many of you, you have cowered in the fear of, of rejection. You've cowered in the fear of what might happen. And I'm telling you, you are not the underdog. And you need to walk in confidence and understand who your God is. I want to take just a moment because of the video that we just watched. And I want to talk about this just quickly. Because uh, Tara made mention of the, the nagging, if you're nagging, you're dragging sermon, which was years and years ago. But what that meant was don't nag your spouse to come because then it's, it's a punishment. It's they're doing something to try and appease you. But there is power in our prayers and there's power in, in us living the way that we should live because just as God affirms us, we need to affirm our spouses. As we learn to affirm others, we will also learn how to accept affirmation from God. When we are constantly critical, we will see things through that lens. Yes. So this affirmation idea is important, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's with your children, affirmation is important. As we affirm our children, as we affirm our spouse, what happens is we begin to see things not as critically, and then we begin to understand that God is constantly affirming us. That even though we have areas that he could definitely point out as your, this is your weakness, and man, you struggle, and boy, did you blow it back there. But that's not the God that we serve. He's constantly wanting to affirm you. He's constantly wanting to tell you how proud he is of you, how much he loves you, how much potential he sees inside of you. And so I just, as I was thinking about Tara and David, I was thinking about how important this point is that we learn to affirm the value of your spouse or the other people in your life. We need to show appreciation for them and for what they do. It's really easy to point out somebody's flaws. It's something else to change the way that you see things and to point out the things that they do well and to affirm those things in them. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25 says, a word of encouragement does wonders. Yes, it does. And the second part of this is to affirm the strengths of your spouse. So in other words, speak to those things and, and, and see the best in them. Even when they make mistakes, see the best in them. Affirm the ministry of your spouse. So let your spouse know that you are so proud of them when you see them doing things for the kingdom. First of all, it does something for them because it builds that inside of them. But you know what else it does is it builds something in your children. They see, oh man, mom is really proud when dad does that. Or boy, dad speaks really highly of mom when she's doing those things. And those are really important as we look at this understanding of how we can come to a place. As we affirm others, we begin to learn how it is that God affirms us. So today I want you to stop believing what the enemy says about you. Whatever tools he has, whatever things that he uses, whatever it is, that voice that, that clicks on in the quietness of your room at night that tells you you're less than, we need to start silencing that voice. Yes. We need to start understanding that your, dad, your God is bigger than the enemy. And we need to allow his word to affirm us. That's why I read you all that scripture. Again, that's all available on the app if you want to reread through some of that. But... It's important for us to not only know who we are in Christ, but we need to know whose we are. Yes. We belong to the king. Yes. And when the enemy seems to be overwhelming, we often feel like we're the underdog, but I'm telling you that he is standing behind you and he is more than able. So I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor. I'm gonna have you close your eyes for the next few moments before we jump into a time of worship and baptism in these last few moments, I really feel like there are some of you that are within the sound of my voice right now that maybe you find yourself in a season where it does feel like the enemy is overwhelming. Maybe it feels like no matter what you do, you can't seem to win. It feels like you're going to lose no matter what. And if you're in that season right now, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're fighting against, can I tell you, you've got two options. You can, you can lay down and cower and, and just hope that you'll make it through. Or you can stand and understand who's standing behind you. And I just really feel like tonight there's, the, there's this opportunity for us to come to a place where we, where we say, yes, I am going to stand. I am going to trust. I am going to believe. I am, I am strong because he is strong in me. Maybe you're here today and your marriage is on the brink and you feel like there isn't much hope. 
Or maybe your, your, your career seems to be stagnant and you're struggling financially or your children are, are a mess and they're, they're making your life miserable and it's hard and you're wondering how you can ever get through and it feels like maybe you just are about to come to a place where you say, you know what, I just, I can't do it anymore. Well, I wanted to close this gathering by giving you an opportunity and the opportunity is this. It's for you to say, you know what? I'm not believing that anymore. I'm not believing the lie that says this is how it always has to be. I'm not believing the lie that says that I can't ever get to the other side of this. I'm not believing that my child won't come to know you. I'm not believing that someday I won't sit in church with my spouse. I'm not believing it anymore. Maybe yours is an addiction that maybe you've, you've been clean for a little while, but you know that that struggle is real and it's, it's constantly haunting you. And so part of you feels like, I'll never fully overcome it. All I can think is that imagery. The Bible says that, that the, the, the devil is a, is a lion seeking whom he may devour. And I think of that cougar in that scene and how it absolutely appears that he has the upper hand. But then, this little cub stands to his feet and he begins to roar. Some of you need to stand to your feet tonight and say, I'm not giving in. I am not giving up. I am trusting God. I am believing that as I stand, he stands. As I make a stand and say, no more. As I make a stand and say, victory is mine. As I make a stand and say, I am not the underdog in this story. That the God of the universe stands behind you. He fights for you. So it's, today, if you're in this, in this place and you find yourself saying, I, I just need, I need, to, I need to make a stand. I need to say, I'm not surrendering. I'm standing. If that's you, would you just do me a favor and just stand to your feet wherever you are and just say, God, I'm standing against whatever this thing is. Whatever this problem is that I'm faced with, I'm going to stand. Today we're going to pray. I'm going to ask you to remain standing because we're going to just pray. I don't have to pray that God will be there because he's there. What I got to pray is that he'll open your eyes so that you'll see that he's there because he is. God, we just come before you right now and we're so grateful because you are in control. That God, you have already won the victory. And the enemy, he can't kill us. So he does whatever he can to kill our victory, to kill the victory spirit inside of us. And so today we come before you and we just say, God, we trust you. Lord, there are circumstances that are represented all over this place. And so, Father, today as they have stood, I pray, God, that you would open their eyes to see that you stand with them. They are not standing alone. God, I know that there are many who are standing who feel as though they've been battling alone. But today I pray that they will understand that you fight for them. God, give them the courage to keep going, to keep fighting, to keep trusting. God, I pray over the spouses that need to come to know you. I pray over the children that are lost, the prodigals that need to come home. I pray over the financial mishaps and the the struggles. I pray over the marriages and the relationships. God, I pray over every need that is represented that God, you will show up and that God will just have testimony after testimony after testimony of you showing up. And God, I pray more than anything that we will not give up Because victory is in front of us no matter what. As long as we keep fighting. I pray peace for all of these circumstances. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Let's just clap. Will you give give God a round of applause? He is good. Well, we've got a few baptisms that we're going to get to right now, and and we're going to spend some time in worship. And if you've not been to River, the way that we do this is we'll just have those who are going to come and be baptized. They'll make their way up here, and the worship team will be singing. You'll be participating in that. And then as they come and they get dunked in the tank, we are just going to erupt in, in praise and cheering. 
because this is an amazing moment in somebody's faith journey. Now, if you're trying to make the decision, should you get baptized, should you not get baptized, am I there in my journey? If you've accepted Christ as your Savior and you've decided to follow him, then this is your next step. This is where you should be. You should get in the tank. This isn't a place that washes your sins. Jesus' blood washes your sins. So you've already accepted Christ. You've already said yes. You've already, you've already asked for forgiveness of your sins. Now next is you get in here and you say, I once was, now I am. You go under the water and you come up saying, I am a new creation in Christ. And I want everybody to celebrate it with me. So that's what we're about to do. The worship team is going to lead us in some worship. And will you just celebrate with us today? All right, let's do it. Everything around
Just speak that to our soul today. He won't fail. Yes. You never fail, Jesus. You're always the same, Lord. Never fail, Jesus. I trust you, Jesus. I trust you, Welcoming 
This is our homecoming Heavy jointed with the glory sound And the great cloud of witnesses all gather round Cause the ones who were lost are finally found The Father is welcoming This is our homecoming The scarlet set and the crimson cross
Jesus' name.
God, we just thank you today. Just give you all the praise. You are the only one worthy, Jesus. Lord, every heart that stepped in that baptismal today, and every heart in this room, Lord, we are declaring Jesus over our life. And that's not just some superficial title. It's not something that we can just post on our social media and put it in our bio. No, oh God, we claim Jesus over our life in every facet of our life, Lord Jesus. Won't you step in? Won't you just invade it, Lord God? Tear down strongholds, Lord. Come and invade our lives, Jesus. Change what needs to be changed, Lord. Rearrange our priorities, God. open ourselves up to it today. We claim Jesus over our life. Come and have your way, Lord God. You saved us from the depths of hell, Lord. And you've called us into everlasting life in the light of your grace, Lord Jesus. And so we celebrate that today and we lift you high in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Come on, can we give him praise one more time today?